Hello, my fellow programmers. Welcome back once more to this Animator PLC course for problem solving. So today we're going to solve a problem, which is industrial fans. It's quite simple. However, the instructions are a bit complicated. So let's start solving this once and for all. Instruction one by selecting the instructions in our exercise. Set a timer, T0, and assign a three second timer. When time runs out, activate fan point zero or O semicolon 0, 0. After six seconds after fan point zero is activated, power on fan point one, but uh, keep fan point zero on. Afterwards, wait three seconds after powering on fan one and power on uh, last fan or O dot, uh, semicolon zero dot two. When fan point two uh, is activated, uh, fans point zero and point one should shut off. What else? What else? What else? And they're still asking us to add a manual mode where we can activate each fan individually, at least. All right, then. Perfect. Yeah, I remember that this this drill is a bit uh, on the long side. All right, guys. Well, this is going to uh, do us good so that we can get better analysis on things. So we have here three fans three outputs. First thing I'm thinking of is directing them or assigning them. For output point zero, I'm going to just move this around a bit. Point one and point two. So they've already been directed. Now let's start toying around. Let's start playing with its permissions. Uh, set timer T0. So let's add a timer. Here we go. T0. Okay. That uh, bit of an issue that you just saw, that we get the panel that's popping up and popping up, uh, we're solving this, guys. So it's telling us three seconds. Okay. After time runs out, activate fan point zero. So then automatically, when we click on or when we select our start button to start simulation, then automatically we're going to start counting. And it's going to tell us or it's going to give us a flag. It's going to throw a flag that when it ends, that first time, it can activate output point zero. So this one apparently is all good. So I'm going to start uh, checking, sorry, uh, checking the checkboxes. I'm going to start adding the Uh, the flag because these are many many instructions just so that you don't get lost in their algorithm or their steps sequence you can start adding them one by one that's my recommendation then after six seconds after the fan is activated at, after it's been uh, timing or after it's timed power on fan one, but keep fan point zero on. Okay. So I'm thinking at a second timer. And here I'm going to solve this uh, the following way. Now also, uh, the limit methodology could also work for this for the fan. 
any way works because it's uh, it's asking us for this here. So here it's indicating six seconds. But at the moment, I'm going to run in cascade so that we don't get lost. But you guys know how this works. If you wish to implement it, then go ahead. And you're going to save a lot of steps. Perfect then. One. Now, what's the condition that is going to power on to activate this timer? T1. Well, whenever T0 uh, timer ends, because it's indicating that after six seconds since, or after the fan activated, after it stopped timing, it's going to power on after it runs out or after it ends after it stops counting six seconds and then we have to power on our fan which is point one but keep uh, fan point zero on so it's still powering on okay now after that after we power on our fan, oh, semicolon 0 0.1, power on, last fan. Then after uh, powering on fan, oh, semicolon 0 0.1, power on the final fan or the last fan, three seconds after. Okay, so we wait three seconds, and we're going to add another line, and we're going to add another timer. And here, as a condition, we could, check this out, guys, we could take the input or a contact to indicate that after it's been uh, activated, This output we are going to activate a different timer which indicates that it should count three seconds to activate the final fan or the last fan and here it's telling us that whenever that timer has uh, is done Okay. To activate, uh, to ultimately activate. So again, we're playing with a, a whole cascade of uh, timers. Now I could leave it like this. Okay. Here we go. All we have to change here is this, but it is exactly the same in theory. If it stops counting our timer number one, it's exactly the same. So it's done, and after it's done, it powers on this output. And when it's done, we're also simulating that it's going to power on. Okay, so we're going to test it out both ways. Now, afterwards, it's telling us when fan, oh, semicolon 0 0.2 is activated, Fan point zero and point one should power on. This is pretty simple because it's telling us here, or we're te we're telling it here, a normally closed uh, contact. If this output is being powered on, I'm going to add this. So then the rest is going to shut off, okay? So everything that has this denied condition, if it's not on, if the fan is not on, then you could very well, uh, sorry, we could power on that second fan. If it's on, 
if that uh, it's going to stop energizing and does not go into loud. Okay, so let's test it out. So this is only going to power on once. Let's see what happens here. In theory, we have all the way to this part. We're just missing one step. It says here, wait. Add a menu emulsor. You can activate each fan individually through a push button for each one. Well, this is optional, actually. I can leave this up to you guys. Or uh, we can, uh, further down, we can take a look at this. All right, so let's start this. First fan is on. Thanks to my timer zero. And it's going to stay on after three seconds. Perfect. I think it all went by pretty fast. <laughs> but that's the way that it's going to stay. Okay. So the last thing it said. When fan 2 is activated, fans 0 and 1 should shut off. Which is what's happening right now. So this is active. And these are not letting any energy flow. So let's analyze this a little bit easier. So first, fan zero powers on. After three seconds, okay. And then after six seconds, we're going to activate fan number one. Both of them are going to stay on. And then after three seconds, fan uh, point two is going to activate. As soon as this activates, these both fans are going to shut off. Okay. Now, waits for three seconds. It powers on. After six seconds. We power this on. Wait six seconds, three seconds, and then this big one uh, powers on, and these other two shut off. Okay. That's basically it for this exercise. But now, if we add a little bit more analysis, if we analyze this, I said, either we add here, okay, our output, okay, one, Because when T1 ends, it immediately is going to power on our output. So this is the same thing, guys. We're telling it that if I get the indication that it's, uh, this output is powered on, I'm going to activate my second timer. Same thing goes here. If I indicate it uh, to activate T1 timer, not when the timer ends, which is basically the same thing, but just so you guys uh, check this. If T0, if output T0 is uh, energized or has energy, then it's going to uh, energize or start timing our T1, which is the same thing. Okay, All we did were these changes. Again, we wait for three seconds. 0 0.0 output is has energy and after six seconds 0.1 three seconds and here it did something a little bit uh, strange so here we're making this an infinity loop okay Now here, what is happening is uh, timer number two dot done is shutting off. Okay, it's restarting because at the moment when we make this to start turning, 
But at the same time, if we're adding the condition to get energy, yes. But once it's energized, it's going to shut off. Then this other timer is resetting. And it's running, it's doing its weird thing. So we also have to analyze this. There are certain things that we suppose are going to work as programmers. But the physical part is indicating us or is telling us that there's something that may be ruining our code. So we need to be very careful with this. Okay, so this is okay. It's good that we added these changes so that you guys can notice that even if we are betting that it's going to work and we're pretty sure about it, it could still fail. Okay, so this is a simulator. It's not really a problem, but what we can do is we can change our logic or take it back to where it was, set it back to re uh, reset it to a default. Because if not, uh, this one is going to reset and we can't have that. Now, what would happen if I uh, if I reset our T1 contact dot done so that it stays that way? The problem now is that this other output is going to uh, get en or energize T1 and it's going to run the cycle again. Okay, so we're going to go back to the way that we had it. And just because of these cases, let's see if this is true. Perfect. And that's it. You see this, guys? It should be the same thing in theory. But since it's resetting the, same, the timers, that's a thing. And we need to be very careful with this. All right, guys. What did you think about this drill? So we saw both changes, right? We need to be very careful with this. So it's best to leave it as is, or we can even start adding uh, conditions if we had this as our output, or as our, as our inputs and output indicators. So we can start adding conditions. But what's the most, uh, what's the best option? Take it back to the uh, correct way and using our code, but it's gonna depend on you guys, depends on the whole situation. If you wish to add that condition for the output as an input, we can add new conditions so we can make our system more robust. Or we can simplify it and just do the same thing with less actions or activities. Both are the same, okay? Now, finally, what else is this asking us for? It is asking us for... to add manual mode where we can activate each fan through a push button from zero to two, specifically talking about inputs. Now, a mistake when we start programming, and I think I already talked about this in essential rules for ladder diagram. It's no fair, guys, to repeat outputs, okay? This is a big no-no, guys, because if we do this, it's not going to really listen to us. The powering on or the shutting off. Here, for example, it's powered on. And this is also uh, powered on. Okay. But it's doing some very strange things. It is listening to my button, yes, but at the same time, here on the top part, it's indicating that it should stay off. And this in programming is wrong, actually. Actually, here it shouldn't even, uh, you know, it shouldn't even uh, do this instruction. Sometimes in the PLC, we have to analyze which outputs are repeated. If we had repeated outputs, the program is not going to work correctly. So we need to be very careful with this. So what we recommend 
is not adding uh, double output or repeating them. Actually, what is recommended is to play around with the conditions. So I'm going to eliminate this. Okay. Perfect then. So once we eliminate this, we could add a, let's see, well, it's already here, our manual mode, okay? And tell it here to not uh, listen to anything. Let's say that this is our automatic cycle, what's working. But we can add our manual mode as is being indicated. So we're going to direct this all each button. And if we're adding a different condition with the same output, so that our code doesn't do anything strange. And here we're telling it on the top a regularly closed contact to indicate that whenever I'm activated this button, it's not doing anything on the top side. So this means that, or this asks, that the automatic part is not under any obligation to make to operate it manually. Okay, we're going to add this. And let's add this on the top side. So, out of two. And I'm going to eliminate this contact. Now here, I'm going to start moving it. Perfect. And two. There we go. So we already have this other instruction in theory. And the last one, adding a manual mode where we can activate each fan independently. So here we have a fan 0, 1, and 2. Let's see if this is true. Here it is working correctly. This is automatic cycle, the one that we uh, previously had programmed. So we power on our last fan, and the rest of them shut off. Now, what would happen if I wish to select maintenance mode? Let's suppose that uh, I'm a maintenance technician engineer. I'm getting paid for the company, from the company, to be able to check these fans. Because remember, each electronic device, each machine, each output needs uh, to have maintenance done every certain amount of time. So that's our job to make to give maintenance. But all we have to do is uh, test out that it's spinning cor correctly. Hi again, guys. This is future Rodrigo. <laughs> Now, I, I noticed that uh, this exercise for this final uh, stage, it's a bit tricky here. So I'd like you guys to do this on your own. Okay, so I'm going to teach you guys. I actually already showed you how to, do, how to do this. And I told you what we should do. So I hope you guys take this into account. But we also need to modify a little bit more our code. So to make this a little bit more interesting, this is something similar to what we should do. I already changed this on our third coil. It's pretty simple. Okay, it's very similar. All right. When I'm in manual mode, I can decide with that permission, of course, playing around with my uh, inputs, to move on to either manual mode so that I can choose my selector or my manual mode position. And when I select it as automatic mode, it's going to work correctly. Okay. That's basically it, guys. How did you guys do it? This is the way that I did it. But how did you guys do it? I'll read you guys in the comments. And I am also reading the emails that you're sending me uh, with all your address.
please guys don't be ashamed we're here we're all here to learn not make fun of uh of each other okay it's a automation uh automation programming is a beautiful community okay we're all the same level so without further ado i hope you like this video i hope you enjoyed it and let's move on to our following video